So I was watching this video um, about, you know, primordial soup, quarks and gluons and the sort, and it got me thinking very quickly about my criticisms with the Big Bang and yada yada yada. And it's like, oh, it's so barbaric and yada yada. They're talking about how... I thought it'd actually be nice. Oh, maybe it's just my... Did I turn up the brightness? Yeah, it still looks good. A uh, bit noisy though, I'll go back inside. I thought it was gonna be a nice like walking video. Eh. Some other day. So, yeah, heat. The heat of the super hot soup. Blows up and puts all the quarks and gluons everywhere and then they make a universe. And I was thinking about like singularity and like an explosion so hot that it makes a universe. And I was like, oh, we can never recreate that because we already have a universe that would bump into stuff. And it got me thinking, if you had a containment, like a big plastic sphere, probably not plastic, something harder, but you know, even even a thin filament of a sphere, if you got to be, you know, this big, this big, micro scale, any real size, let's just say it's the size of this room, for example, if you could cool the entire area enough, or not even cool, just restrict movement enough, like a big goo, so that any particles that fall, fly through it get slowed? If you were able to slow that room enough, you can make an explosion inside of it and reduce the radius of the effect. Now, we can make singularity-like things all the time. Just that they make a really big boom. And it's hard to keep big booms in small places. But if we can make this kind of goo, or just really cold place, or even really hot place, in a different sense to restrict the movement, we could smash two atoms together, or really smash two protons, or neutr smash two neutrons together so that they don't, yeah, so that they don't, like, attract or repulse each other. Um, smash two neutrons together, or even two, hell, two quarks. Yeah, let's go two quarks just to get as small as we can. If you can get the smallest singularity possible, the smallest explosion of super tiny matter, if you could make the explosion radius minuscule, like millimeters and millimeters, then you could have a Big Bang where if this entire screen door is the radius, if the entire screen door is the radius of the sphere, the explosion could take up like this much. Like all that explosion. And it would take years for the explosion to get anywhere near the actual outside. If you could do that, you could simulate an entire universe of stuff. Plus, with the restrictive, it might even make time pass slower for the particles in terms of, you know, it would take them longer to meld together and make atoms. So if you got, you know, say we got fusion, say, say we had uh, nuclear fusion, we could, we could make super big atoms or just super big particles. I mean, what if we could have super conductivity of subatomic particles. What if we could have superconductivity of quarks and gluons to just make a giant bulge of quarks and gluons and leptons and baryons and like things that are smaller than neutrons and protons without it being an atom or a proton or a neutron or other structure? What if we could get this magnetic force? this superconductive force to just hold a bunch of these things together without them actually making an atom. Therefore, without generating an electron field, therefore staying extremely tiny in size. See, a proton isn't the size of three quarks. It's three quarks and a bunch of gluons and a bit of But if you get them all to be sticking right to each other, if you get all of them to be sticking to each other, then you could have 
Then you could have millions of sub. I ran out of space. Uh, I was recording in QHD. That was a bit much. Totally forgot. Um, you'd have millions of subatomic particles in the space that one proton would take. So, if you get a shell around them, and then explode all of them at once, you could have this super huge singularity in terms of actual stuff in it. Like, way more particles than crashing a proton and a neutron together. It would be the equivalent of crashing thousands of protons and neutrons together in the space of not even a proton. And if you get this glue to work, this goo, this super cold place, then all of that, you could have all that happen in here and only take up this much space in a few minutes. In a few hours, you know, it might reach the shell, but, you know, by then we can chuck it into space or whatever so we don't have to deal with the, like, who knows how much energy would be inside there. But if we, yeah, slow the speed of light, therefore the speed of all the particles, therefore the speed of the heat and the energy, we could observe it and this little tiny universe and whatever happens from it, hell, maybe there'll be some anti-particles and stuff in there. If we could just slow it down, we could observe it for years, absolutely years, before it ever threatens us. Because, my god, that goo gives away, you have a really big nuke on your hands. But the idea is that you don't even need a super titanium shell around it. You can have a little plastic bubble. As long as that goo doesn't vibrate near the end within a few years, you're good. <laughs> of course, someone makes the wrong calculation and pops the bubble. Even then, like, oh my god, if you had this super amazing glue, the super amazing goo in the ball, technically speaking, if you ripped off the shell and started digging away at it, it would, like, it might even have so much energy inside of it that it counteracts the gravitational force and it would just levitate there. Like, like a time portal. You could shove your fist in it and it would just be like, Whoa. and you would just be like, um, my hand's not moving. Well, it's moving, it's just moving really slowly, but with the same amount of force, reverse blue reference, um, it would be its own little universe, but with as much energy as an entire planet. Like, think of an think of using that as an energy source. Think of if you could take a skewer and skewer out a tiny little hole in the goo straight to the center. Then there'd be an access for that, and then you replace it with, like, a less dense goo. So energy would be allowed to come out through there at double the speed of the other goo. Still relatively slowly, but you can make this laser of goo. Not of goo. Make this laser of the heart of a universe. And just point it at shit. That's fucking insane. And you can use it as an energy source. Because as long as you have enough fuel to kickstart it, and I mean, sure, this fuel might be millions and millions of atoms, but I could take a chunk of dirt and make a universe out of it if I could just clump all those particles together. Yeah, just take dirt and turn it into a... Not even a nuke at that point. It's its own universe. If you get all the things to clump together with no space in between them, you could crash them into each other and if you get this glue to work, you could get this just to fester in slowed down time forever. And just observe it. And maybe all that extra space out, like, think of it as in the, oh shit. The center of an atom is the explosion and all the soup. And the big electron field, that's all open free space for it to move to. And if you think about it, if you put yourself in the shoes of the explosion, all that space outside is normal time and all the space outside is super fast time. Just like how we could perceive the universe outside of our own could out, uh, operate a different time field. So, all the particles might 
clump together, form atoms, but they might be super tiny versions of atoms. Because with the super conductive energy fields and everything, we might make a whole new system of atomic configuration. Because the forces in there would be unlike anything we see in our world. Nowhere in our world are there attractive and repulsive forces so strong like that. Like, this superconductor that we would make to put quarks into each other, if we dropped that, it would eat up the entire world. Like, this is some crazy shit I'm talking about. So yeah, it, it, it spreads out, forms into protons and neutrons, but smaller versions of them, because, I mean, if we shatter quarks and quarks and gluons, we're going to get what makes up quarks and gluons. But then they would take the roles of quarks and gluons, so we'd have an entire atomic system, just like our Big Bang, if we had it, only on a smaller scale. We would make a mini-universe, because it would expand out. And if, if we could control the goo and change the time rate, we could accelerate it up until there are planets and shit, until there are stars. And then we could, we could put, I mean, like, even the smallest form of life, like, even a virus would be the size of a super giant star. So imagine this empty universe, this universe filled with a bunch of stuff but no life. Maybe some super tiny versions of life or something. Maybe an entire Earth that develops in that tinier system. And then we put in this virus, like, the smallest version of life we have. And it's the size of a black hole, or, or a supermassive star, a delta G's, or whatever, however you pronounce that star. Imagine we introduced that in that world, and told it to feed all of matter, and, re and replicate. That would be like the Reapers! Imagine being one of those tiny people, and then it's just like, from outside the universe, like you have deep scans. You build FTL drives, and because we can accelerate them to accelerate faster than our world is accelerating, and go past where we're developed, and cause them to make their own explosion and the little thing, and that goes on forever. But we could accelerate them to the point where they create faster than life drive, faster than light communication. But their speed of light is slower than our speed of light. So imagine if we got that technology from them, and the, it, it's it's time travel. It's time travel! If you could make a universe that's exactly parallel of yours and speed it up by changing the very... It would basically be like changing the, the Higgs boson particle field, you know, how mass interacts. If we could change the speed of mass of a different universe parallel to our own, then we could take the information that they make in their year 5 million and take it our year 2000. Time travel! Now all we would need for this is a super conductive uh, con a super, super conductive construct to put quarks and gluons into gigantic mounds without them creating atomic fields. Easy. And then all we have to do is create a glue, a goo, that we can encase this explosion in that slows the rate of all this stuff. Then we have to make a shell to hold that in. Then we have to make ways to observe all this. And then we have to power, like, after that we can, like, drill a hole down in, put the half speed goo, then power something off the photon streams that come out. Only they wouldn't be photons, because a photon from our world would be gigantic in their world. They would be super tiny photons with the same amount of energy maybe even more it's an entirely more efficient universe and then we take that stream of particle light put it into a freaking like those fans that spin when they hit sunlight power a motor with it we have a super amazing motor to power the world with you put little holes all over the thing and just have it be a core to something and have it be a power device. But it would be more than an energy core. It would be a whole universe for these other people living inside of it. So imagine you can travel around your universe 
and you find the center of your universe. I know the center of your universe is everywhere, but that place actually has a center. I mean, technically it doesn't. No, it wouldn't, because it would all be expanded out. So it doesn't have a center. I mean, it technically has a center because it's inside of a sphere, but, I mean, the gravitational force of our planet might have, like, shifted it down. So, like, if this is the sphere, sphere, the center we say is here, but the universal center of mass might be, like, down here, because it might slowly pull on that because there's more energy there, so more mass. So it would be more susceptible to gravity than, uh, than the goo around it. It might rip it out through the bottom and... Oh, God, it's crazy. Um, okay, uh, continuing. Imagine you, you fly around and you find these bl super massive black holes. Like, a millimeter diameter black hole, which would be insanely huge in their world. Like, bigger than a super giant star. And it's just sucking out light, as a black hole does. Well, unbeknownst to you, if you went through it and somehow survived this particle stream, you would get shot out into our universe. Where nothing exists on that particle scale that they would live in. Like, a human body to them might be the size of a, a an atom. And they would just, like, float around and they... Uh, are particle fields that control things would be so big to them that they could just avoid it. They could build a civilization off harvesting our macro scale stuff, even though it'd be extremely inefficient to them. And they could fucking petri dish shit. Time travel is the most important part of that. The most important part of that is that if we get the technology that they make for their FDL stuff or just anything, that we could bring it back to our world and just, you know, do some translations. Shrinking. More efficient. And then they make a universe inside their universe and that universe makes a universe inside their universe and we come down and tell them, hey, like, use their FTL drives back to them. It's like, hey, you're part of our experiment. We made you and we're using you as a source of power to fuel our universe. Um, because we could, we could power a sun with that thing. And we're like, yeah, so, um, we have a problem. Your universe is slowly expanding. You already know that. Our universe is slowly expanding. We already know that. There's a shell. When your universe reaches the outside of this shell, which we said would take forever, but we started accelerating your society so that we could use your technology that we get out of it. Thanks, by the way. Um, we accelerate it a bit too much, and you are kind of approaching the outsides of the sphere. Now, we have two options. One option, let you keep expanding, and then you break the outside barrier, cross your goo with our goo, and then have an, a cataclysmic event with the force of a million nukes exploding our entire society and, pro and probably disrupting the space of our universe. Or we change the substance of your goo, cause your universe to collapse in on itself and restart the process, killing all of you. What do you think we should do? Have us both die or have you die? And then, lo and behold, our universe... No, you want to something? No, because like, they would have already said this to their micro scale universe the only thing missing here is for someone to come down and tell our micro scale universe that we are part of an experiment yada 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 but I mean people don't like when I say that all these things could apply to us one stage up so time travel that's the important thing that's uh am I gonna make this ransom all the speeches or am I going to make this not a vlog? You know what, I'll just make the two the same thing. So this is not a vlog episode two, part two, because I ran out of space before. And, uh, yeah, this is what RMS is going to be, I guess. Th this is how my brain works. I just go off like that. I watched that video for maybe three seconds before I came up with the start of this idea. 
Welcome to RMS Season 5, I think. Hashtag not a vlog. I'm not a vlogger. I'll see you next time. Goodbye, everybody!